Well, good Thursday, Thursday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. I am having an incredible one. Um, you know, we, we've got some things we're dealing with, okay? We found out this morning that Diggs may not be ready to start training camp, which could be a big blow uh, to the Dallas Cowboys. And, of course, we have some unhappy campers because we have not done the contracts and things. You know, here it is. I want to say that the Detroit Lions have spent somewhere around of 600000 I'm sorry, $600 million in contract stuff as opposed to the Dallas Cowboys, which have spent about ninety-eight. And, you know, this is one of those things that I, I can't think that this is helping the cohesion of the team. Um, I think maybe it's making it more of it's us versus the front office, that they are the villains here. You can't blame Mike McCarthy or the players for having a little animosity basically being put on blast. And it's kind of crazy because here it is, Mike McCarthy has the highest win percentage of any coach of the Dallas Cowboys. With that by far, uh, any since Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer that had incredible teams that got an advantage because let's be right, real here. Minnesota Vikings helped to make that Dallas Cowboy team, and Jimmy Johnson and his ability to evaluate talent just got better personnel than everybody else. And when you can do that, it's hard not to win. Be that as it may, we got the Joneses who are now the exact opposite of that and basically letting the Dallas Cowboys um, just – we're going to do more with less. Uh, I don't know how that really works. And, you know, the funny thing to me is how the fans get mad at players wanting to get paid. I honestly say if you're at your job, you want to be the highest paid in your office or your construction site or wherever it is you work. You don't want to do the same job as somebody else and see them make twice three times four times the amount of money that you do you know what i'm saying I, I don't care if you're mcdonald's you don't want to see the guy who's flipping burgers beside you making 25 dollars an hour and you're making seven and you're flipping the burgers just as good maybe even better so that's one of those things that i have a problem with now here's the good news is that dak prescott immediately called cd lamb when Justin Jefferson got his. So Dak, you know, regardless of what C.D. Lamb's mom said, Dak and C.D. are definitely here on the same page. Because, see, if you were C.D. Lamb and you wanted to get out of Dallas, then what you do is you show up for minicamp. You go ahead and play this year and just say, I'm not signing the contract. And hopefully at the end of the year, you're a free agent to go ahead and go to the Texans. But he's trying to get that contract, which is why he's holding out, because he wants to be there. So that's the good news on that. So CD, this is what Dak Prescott has said about CD. CD's handling business, Prescott said. Nobody's more in his corner than I am. Understanding that this is his chess move, and he's got to do that. So I know him. I know he's been working. As I've said, I've thrown with him. He's just fine. So... Today is the last day of minicamp. He ain't going to be there. So he's got $101,000 in fines. It's a big chunk of change for you and me. But that's chump change when you're looking at about $140 million. It just is. The other part of this is I find it amazing how Micah Parsons is punking the media and so, such. Okay? See, here's the thing. Whether you like Stephen A. Smith or you hate Stephen A. Smith, Stephen A. Smith found the golden ticket, so to speak. And that is, it doesn't matter if they like you or hate you. The fact that they're watching you is all that matters. And people have learned, it's not about being right and putting out the facts. It's about getting a reaction. When Stephen A. Smith, you know, does his whole cowboy hat, I hate the cowboys, ah, and then, then, then I busted him. Yes, I busted him. 
Super Bowl party, busted his ass, hugging all up on Jerry and Stephen Jones, you know, to the point where they needed to get a room. And I put it on tape and put it out there. After that, I was like, oh, I love the Jones. I love the Jones. That's the Cowboy fan. Oh, is that right? We made you, bro. And Micah Parsons has figured that out, too. Because he is, you know, we always heard. Here's, here's the thing that's so funny. It's, it's a double-edged sword. We always heard Skip Bayless and people talking about, as the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, you get all the publicity. You have the side gig and all of the endorsements and things that are out there. And so you are supposed to take advantage of those things. Well, Micah Parsons is taking that to the next level. Becoming the president of Bleacher Report. Being a podcaster. Being his own brand. And basically, well, we just said, being the president of, of a Bleacher Report. And getting you people to watch and talk about him constantly. Constantly. In the same way, he's learned from the master, Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones you got to say, is P.T. Barnum, Barnum Bailey Circus. As they put it, there's a sucker born every minute. And Micah Parsons understands about selling himself for you to watch. The more you watch, whether you like him, hate him, call him a diva, say he's the greatest player since Lawrence Taylor, or say the Cowboys need to hurry up and sign him, or that the Cowboys need to trade him. doesn't matter. You have him on your lips. And it's funny because we get so many clips and things about Micah Parsons and stuff that make you think he's a bad guy, you know, and it's taken out of context. Listen to this from ESPN because they've gone through Micah Parsons is not happy with new defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer. Let's watch. Us wait until you hear what Michael Parsons said about his new defensive coordinator. Also, Stephon Diggs spoke for the first time as a Texan. Find out why his new quarterback is pumped up. Plus, we'll fill you in on how top pick Caleb Williams is looking at Bears minicamp. And with that, welcome to the studio. Kevin Nagani here alongside Lewis Riddick, Booker McFarland, and Adam Schefter. And let's start with our top stories here, Schefter. What's the latest here with Brandon Ayuk? Still not at mandatory minicamp, Kevin. He is going to be subject to over $100,000 worth of fines, but Brandon Ayuk also could be close to cashing in on a contract that would make those fines move. He wants a new deal. We've seen a lot of wide receivers get new deals, big deals. Mm -hmm. Ayuk believes that he is in their category. The issue is the Niners also drafted a wide receiver in round one and already have paid Christian McCaffrey like a wide receiver. As for the Cowboys and their wide receiver, C.D. Lamb, also not at mandatory minicamp, also subject to fines exceeding $100,000. He had been waiting for the Justin Jefferson deal to get done. And now that it has, we see the numbers, a $35 million annual average, $110 million in guaranteed money. Mm. D.D. Lamb views himself in the Justin Jefferson category conversation, which is why he waited. And now Dallas will see if it can figure out a way to get done a deal with its number one wide receiver in, in which the Cowboys are supposed to be all in. Listen, Mike McCarthy doesn't sign the checks. He doesn't write them out. But he was asked about entering a season with this much uncertainty. Here's what he said. Uh... This is the urgency you should always have, to be honest. Um, so, so maybe guys who normally wouldn't fill it, fill it. Um, so, so I don't mind it. I've um, been in this position before. I'm a gambling man. will gamble on myself. I mean, obviously, CD's handling business. Nobody's more, more in his corner than I am, understanding that, that that's his chest moving. He's got to do that. So um, I know him. I know he's been working. As I said, I've thrown with him. So uh, some of these guys be, being able to get in there and take those reps, right? Me and, I, and honestly, growing my confidence of them. 
Okay, that was not Mike McCarthy. That is Dak Prescott talking about his situation, his approach this summer. Dallas has some big decisions to make. Look at these Cowboys out of a contract in nine months. You got Dak, you got C.D. Lamb, you got Demarcus Lawrence, and the list goes on and on. And, of course, let's not forget about Micah Parsons, extension eligible. The centerpiece of the Cowboys defense is only under contract through This is where it gets addressed. Back here with the guys. Lewis, when you look at all these guys waiting to get paid, where do you have C.D. Lamb as a priority? Top of the list. He's right near the very top. I mean, obviously, quarterback always – trumps all as far as trying to get that position squared away. But look, there's a reason why wide receiver has become basically the second most valuable position on an NFL roster. And just look at it. Just go look at the college game. And I've talked to many coaches who have talked about this. The fact that wide receiver has really surpassed pass. It's crazy how much wide receivers get paid. Overall roster for two reasons. One, because of the role that he plays in the development, in the production, in the efficiency of the quarterback, which is the most important guy on the football field. And two, a secondary benefit that really, quite honestly, it makes sense from a business perspective. You want to attract more players, score points. How do you score points quickly in the NFL and in college? You throw the football and you produce explosive plays. How do you get more fans in the seats? How do you get more fans buying season <coughs> tickets? Score points. Have an explosive offense. How, who does that for you? Wide receivers do it for you. And then really just look at... Honestly, man, me and Zen probably said a total of 20 words to each other. Okay. Yeah, he's he's a he's a very quiet person, and all I keep hearing this, from this the is coach is like Zen likes it this way. I was like, well, I like it this way, like you know. So I can't wait to have like my true like sit down with him. I think it'll be pretty cool, because obviously old school mindset, old school mentality. Um, but you know, I think he has a lot of great players, but he ain't never have a mic before. He never had a Micah before. I love it. Love the confidence. So Bullock, they're going to take this. How does Zimmer's defense fit here with the Cowboys defensive personnel led by Micah Parsons? Yeah, well, first of all, Micah Parsons can, can fit in any defense. And, and, and I think if, if you're Zimmer, you're just trying to figure out a creative way to use him and put him in the best position possible. I, I think he should be a defensive end every play, but multiple times he's lined up at off the ball linebacker and blitz and things of that nature. But Zimmer is smart. Zimmer understands this defense right now is built on speed, so he has to use their speed to their advantage. They're going to have to get better at linebacker. Damone Clark is the name that's going to be key to this defense. Michael Parsons is going to get all the attention, but how Damone Clark plays in the middle of this defense will be key. They got to get a little bit bigger up front. They got the ball ran down their throat against the Green Bay Packers. And so I think if you're a Zimmer, you got to figure out a way. How can we be stout on first and second down periodically to get to third mm -hmm. down when we can unleash this speed and rush the passer? Zimmer is a veteran coordinator. He will figure it out. We all know him for the double A gap blitzes, but I promise you, he's got a lot more to his package than that. Yeah, this isn't this isn't something really that Mike's going to come up with some kind of special scheme to make up for any deficiencies like they had last year. And Book's exactly right. Look, he, Mike's going to play gap sound, very fundamentally sound defense. Most defensive coordinators in the NFL do. The NFL is about players, though. And really, I've said all offseason, Dallas's issue on the defensive side of the football is a personnel issue. And Book, again, look, he, he is right. Damone Clark has to rise up and be a player. The Marvion Overshone, their third round pick of a year ago from Texas, who got hurt in training camp with an ACL, who was an absolute just stick of dynamite waiting to, waiting to unleash on people. He has to show up. Maris Leofow, the, the draft pick out of Notre Dame, has to show up. Eric Kendricks has to show up this year. These guys have to play. And they have to play big, and they have to play physical, and they have to play downhill. Mike Zimmer is not a magician. He's a coach. He's a fundamentally sound coach that has coached some great players in this league. And he'll find a way to utilize Micah Parsons to the fullest. Mm -hmm. But they better make sure that everyone else steps up. And I hope that they, they've corrected their personnel issues. Because if not, Mike Zimmer ain't going to be the one who's going to step out there and put pads on. Well, let's hope that personnel actually wished him a happy birthday today because Mike Zimmer is celebrating his 68th birthday. And, uh, of course, there we go. So I don't see a problem there. I see Micah Parsons is playing you. Relax, people. Relax. It's not as bad as you think. All righty, good people. We've got some more work to do. Just taking a little break, checking in with my peeps. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.